We all want to live healthy and having a good diet is a major part of that. But sometimes due to deceptive advertising or just a lack of understanding, our attempts at eating healthy can sometimes backfire. In this video, we're going to go over 10 common foods that you're eating that may seem healthy but aren't. Hi, I'm Dr. Eric Richardson, a board certified family practice physician. I'd like to welcome you to Family Med, a channel that focuses on giving you practical and accurate medical information to help you and your family. If you think this would be something that is helpful to you, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button and follow along with us. One of the biggest problems I see in my practice is an overall lack of understanding on what really makes a healthy diet. It's hard because you have so many different messages out there that are confusing, conflicting, or outright deceiving. You see packaging to advertise something as gluten-free, as low-fat, or organic that are trying to convince you that it's healthy. I remember once talking with a patient of mine several years ago who was very obese and she was lamenting about how hard it was for her to lose weight. As we talked about her struggles, I had her tell me about her typical diet. She worked, so every morning she would have a bottle of a yogurt drink and a low-fat Pop-Tart. You couldn't get a more unhealthy breakfast. But I was shocked that she was shocked to learn how unhealthy this was. We need to start educating ourselves on what is healthy and not rely on what the food manufacturers want to tell us on the outside packages. With that in mind, let's talk about some of the common foods out there that may be getting you in trouble. The first I'm going to focus on I just mentioned, and that's yogurt. Yogurt can be a great part of a healthy diet, but unfortunately, most types of yogurt that you see in the store shelf are full of sugar. And sugar is the biggest thing that is going to get you in trouble when you're trying to lose weight. Like I said, yogurt can be a very healthy thing, but you need to stick with plain low-fat yogurt or Greek yogurt and then flavor it with berries or other whole foods and natural ingredients. The next one is whole grain or multi-grain bread. We're always recommending this over white bread. However, you need to be careful here. Most commercially available breads like this still have a large percentage of white flour as their main ingredient. They may have whole grains in them, but oftentimes they're more of an afterthought. When you're looking for a whole grain bread, make sure you look at the ingredients and avoid anything that has the word enriched at the top of the list. You want to make sure that whole grains are the very first thing. Third on our list is plant-based milks. There's been a lot of bad press against dairy lately, but most of it's unwarranted. Plant-based milks such as soy, almond, and rice milks do not have near the nutrients that cow's milk does. Also, many of the plant-based milks end up putting in different sugars and unneeded fats as well. Now, you may need to have other reasons to avoid milk, especially if you have some intolerances to it, and that's fine. But just purely as a health choice, milk will get you a lot more bang for your buck. Fourth on our list is fruit smoothies. I remember when we first got married, we were expecting our first child. We would go by the local smoothie stand and get one every day. It just seemed and felt healthier. After a month or so of doing that, noticing that both of our waistlines were expanding, we were shocked to see how many calories these smoothies had. They were upwards of five to 600 calories a piece with well over 100 grams of sugar. Smoothies can be a healthy thing, but make sure you make them at home and avoid all the sweeteners. The next thing that we're gonna talk about is low fat peanut butter. These highly processed spreads have the same amount of calories as peanut butter. The only difference is that they have replaced the fat with processed fillers and sugar. This is actually the case with many low fat products in general. They've taken the fats away, but replaced them with ingredients that are worse for you and just make it easier to eat more. So go for the full fat version. In moderation, fats contained in nuts are healthier for your heart. The sixth is granola. Granola look, looks super healthy because it's full of whole grains, nuts, seeds, and dried fruit, which are a good thing. The problem is though that the manufacturers then go and coat them with sugar and other sweeteners and then cook them in oil. So you've taken something that is very healthy and ruined it. Granola can be a great thing, but it's better to make it yourself so you control how much sweetener and oils that are used. Number seven are wraps. This one always surprises me, but many wraps or tortillas have just as many, if not more, carbs and calories than two slices of bread. Wraps tend to be bigger and more dense. Now the spinach or tomato ones, they're not any better either. They may have a little more vegetable to them, but it's not enough to make a significant nutritional difference. You still need to watch your carb intake. Now, number eight is instant flavored oatmeal. We all know that oats are good, so therefore any kind of oatmeal must be healthier. Well, the problem is, is when they're put into little packets with different flavorings. They, like many of the other foods that we have talked about, are full of sugar. 
Oatmeal can be a great source of soluble fiber and a great breakfast meal, but add your own fruit and healthy ingredients. Number nine is a sweetener that has started to become more popular. As we've tried to stay away from sugars, many are reaching for more natural sweeteners. One that many are turning to is agave. Most commonly sold as a syrup, this comes from the agave plant, so it's felt to be more natural. The problem with agave is that it is no better, if not worse, than regular sugar. It carries an excessive percentage of fructose, which can be a source of significant metabolic problems when consumed in excess. Sticking with sweeteners such as erythritol, xylitol, or stevia seem to be a safer alternative. The last one that we're going to talk about today is breakfast cereals. There are many that are obviously bad for you, but even many of those that are marketed as healthy are not good. They always advertise that they're made with whole grains or enriched with vitamins. The problem is, again, all the sugars that they're putting in them. When choosing a cereal, you need to look at the ingredients. Sugar is often one of the first ingredients, but can be hidden under the names of corn syrup, fructose, fruit juice concentrates, glucose, malt syrup, or evaporated cane juice. Many cereals can have a whole day's worth of sugar in one serving. I remember as a kid, my mom, when we went to the grocery store, she would send us to the cereal aisle to pick out our cereal. We could pick any cereal that we wanted, but sugar had to be at least the fifth ingredient listed. It wasn't until much later that I realized how genius he was. Not only did she keep us busy in the grocery store for the whole hour searching for a cereal that would qualify, but it also kept us from getting those sugar-filled cereals. Look for those true whole grain cereals that contain more natural ingredients, such as seeds and nuts with little to no added sugars. This certainly isn't a comprehensive list of foods that may look healthy, but really are not. There are many more examples, but this is a good start. What's important is you begin to look at ingredients of what you are eating. Educate yourself on what is healthy and what isn't. We need to change the way that we interact with food. We need to start looking at food more as fuel for our bodies instead of something to satisfy our taste buds. When we do, we'll be in the pathway to good health. Well, I hope you found this to be helpful. And if you did, please take time to give this video a like and share it with your friends. It helps our channel to grow and reach other people that may need this in their life. And if you haven't done so yet, don't leave without subscribing and hitting that notification button so you don't miss out on any of our future content. But until next time, this is Family Med with Dr. Richardson. And remember, take care of your body because it's the only one you have.